having a backend can be crucial in some apps. So that's why we'll check in this video how we can connect Flutter with Firebase in creating a sign-in flow. Uh, and because this video will not be covering everything, we will have a three-part video where this video will be a, a sign-in flow. The next video, get a free full month of Skillshare and stream more than 18,000 online classes on subjects like design, business, and tech. After a while, and you feel like this isn't for you, you can always cancel a subscription and not pay anything. So don't wait, try it out now. The link is in the description. If you like this kind of videos, uh, please let me know by subscribing to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Uh, and also liking and commenting what you'd like to see next. So let's just dive into it. So let's see. Here we have a started, uh, a newly created project, which has a my app and a my homepage. So we will begin by creating our login page. So I already given it a title here. So the second thing is we will rename this, um, this class. So let's just call this uh, login page and also rename this to login page state like that. So what, act what I actually will do now is uh, control X this, so cut it out and then go to the project. Let's go to the library, create a directory. Let's set this to to set up. So this folder will have a new Dart file called uh, sign in. So the sign in page. We'll just paste this in and import the material package. So let's just rerun this. Oh, actually, we have to import that. Now we can run it. So what I actually will go ahead and do is re remove all these new keywords because we don't need them anymore. And remove this also. Excuse me for this. Uh, so there we go. Now we have a setup where we have our sign in page. So what we'll do now is actually create the, the body, which will just be a, a, um, a form with a column and the child of this will be a column and I'm just setting to do so we know what to do so in this one we will actually implement key and up here we will have to create the two variables that will hold the email and password so to do that, let's start with uh, creating our variables. We will just be using string. And uh, this will be called email and then password. And just in case you didn't know, the underscore will just mark them as private in the Dart language. So here at the top, we will create our key to use for the form. So we'll use the final and create a global key. So what the global key will have, uh, have here is a form state. And then we'll just call it form key. Like that. So now we can take this key, go to the form, set the key property to the form key like that. So now inside this column, we will have our text form fields. So actually we won't have any nice formatting to display this. We will just uh, print them in a column. Maybe I'll do a second tutorial on how we can style this afterwards, but we'll just go with the basics for now. So we need two form fields or two text form fields like that. And we will have a validator we will have a on saved. Just remove that. And let's see what we need more. We need a decoration. So let's start with the decoration, which will be a input decoration. And for the input decoration, we can set the label text to email on this one. And for the validator on saved, they will be about the same. So we have a input and for the input, 
we open the brackets and if the input we'll just check if it's if it's empty or not and here really you will actually check if it contains like an at sign or something for email to validate if it's an actual email or not uh, and we will return uh, please type some text please type an email is better so if the user press the button later uh, and haven't provided an email we will just print this to the to the field so on the unsaved we will provide an input we'll take the email and set it to the input so there we go there we have our uh, form field for the the email so if we just save that we can see that we have an email there so we'll just take this and copy it down so here we can have please provide a password and we will actually set input.length is less than six your password six characters like that uh, we change this to password we change this one to password and that to input and that should be fine and we will also have one more thing called obscure text which will just uh, obscure the text we type into the field so if we try that we can see that it uh, displays dots instead there we go so for the, the third thing we need is to actually have a button. So we'll just provide a raised button, which, a, which has a on pressed, and we'll just do like this for now. And a child for the text. So we'll actually do a couple of things. We will, we will actually only do the sign in now, to be honest. I will do the sign up in the next tutorial. Um, like that so if we save this again we can see that we have a button and we will create our sign in method so if we go down to the bottom of this class we can create a method called void sign in which is small letter in the beginning so sign in and here we will validate fields and then uh, log in to Firebase. So what we can do now is do the validate and we'll do the Firebase after. So to do the validation, we just check for a if and we can actually to make it a bit easier, we can create a final field called uh, form or something. And that will be form key dot the current state. And uh, we can actually have form state. So now we can just call form state dot validate in the if. So if this is true, we can log into Firebase. So now to begin with connecting with Firebase, uh, I have a couple of links to do that. So if I just do this, if I create, so here up I have a, a page to the code labs and uh, we will use that while we go over and I will only go over Android, uh, but you can see the configure for iOS here. So to begin, uh, we have, let's just close this down. There we go. So we create a new project and for the name of this project, we will have testing2 as an example. Uh, and this project will not exist when this tutorial is up, just add heads up. So we have this test uh, testing2. We accept the, uh, or we approve the Google Terms of Service and we create the project. So while this is creating the project, we can check here what to actually do afterwards. So it says that we have to go in and create an app 
and we haven't actually gotten that far even so let's go back here now there we go so if we continue uh, we go to there we go uh, that's actually a bit oh, weird uh, never mind click on the Android icon and we get to this page so this page we have to provide our Android package so to, bro to provide this Android package we can go to the project go to Android let's see if I remember this um, I think it's this one, right? It's actually not that one. Maybe it's in is it this one. Uh, let's see. Compile version. There we go. So the application ID here. So we copy this. So this was in the Android folder and then go to the app and then build Gradle. We copy this uh, application ID. We go back again. We paste this in here. And we will not give it a nickname. So we re register an app. You can give it a nickname if you want. I will just not do it. So we will have this Google services. And you just hit download. So now we have this Google services. So I will uh, copy that one. We go into the application. We can close this build Gradle for now. And if we check um, this uh, this code uh, labs, we can scroll down and see where we need to paste this. And we let's see. Move the, uh, the JSON file to the Android slash uh, app folder. So if we go back to the project, we can go to Android and app. So inside here, we can paste it in. So there we have our JSON file. And as I said before, this won't be up when the video is up. So I will have uh, this project removed. Um, so let's check for the next step. So finally, you need to read the Google JSON file that's generated by Firebase, blah, blah, blah. We take this file or this text right here. Uh, and we can see that open app build.gradle and following line to the last line of the file. So if we go back, go to build.gradle, scroll all the way to the bottom, and we can paste this, uh, apply it to the plugin. We go back again. We can see that they want to put this into the build script in the build.gradle in Android folder. And they only want this, uh, this class path right here. So we take this, we can actually copy the whole thing. We'll go back. And they only wanted to go to the Android folder and then build.gradle. We go to the class uh, build script and then dependencies. Uh, and we can use for Firebase, like that. Uh, and that should be enough for that. So the next step, is actually to import a package. So we we'll zoom into this so this better. Firebase. So what we actually need to uh, to make the the connection with uh, the the sign in. So we can just go ahead and skip all the steps and go to authentication. We can set up a sign in method and we will take the email and password and enable that. We can save it. So right now we can see that we don't have any user and as we are going to do the sign up um, in the next tutorial, we just add a user like that. And we take a simple password like that. We can just do testing. There we go, there we have a user. So now we can take this Firebase auth package, go to the install, copy the dependency go down, go to pubspec.yaml and we can paste it down below the uh, SDK of Flutter. We can package.get and I will close this. I will go to the sign-in page and we scroll down and we can see the import. We'll get the dependency and import this at the top. Like that. There we go, no errors. We can close this. 
and we can open the application. So now we should be connected with the application. Uh, we will actually see that later. Uh, so for this uh, if statement in the field, we will uh, actually create a try catch, but I will show you why. So when you're doing this, uh, we will have a, a new class called Firebase Auth. So with this, we can get instance and we have a method called sign in with email and password. Uh, and I don't know if you saw that, I will show it again. It has a future and returns a Firebase user. So right here on the email, we will actually have to do one more thing. So as you saw before with the fields, we created this, uh, these two strings, the email and the password. And on saved on these two form fields, we set this. So we have to actually call, call the form state and dot uh, save. And that will call these functions inside there so we can save the variables into our variables. So then we can call, uh, uh, sign in with our email and our password. So as I said before, as this requires a, as this is a future, we can set this method to async. We will do a future void and we import the data async. We can do await on this. And as I said before, this actually returns a Firebase user. So we can do that too. Let's call it user. Uh, and as this line is pretty big, we can actually, uh, no, let's have it like that. There we go. So we have this um, sign-in flow. So as we're using await, we have to have a try and catch in case something is wrong. So now we can take this and put it in the try. So here we want to navigate to home because if we get here, that means that this is working. And here we can just print the error. And the error for uh, uh, Firebase has a message. So we can get that uh, directly from, from the error. And to navigate to the new screen, we will actually have to create a new class or a new uh, home widget. So inside the setup, we'll actually create a new folder again, which is uh, pay something like pages. So inside these pages, we will create a Dart file called home. And we can create this uh, snippet called stateful and we'll just call this home and import this to the material uh, and not use a container, we'll use a scaffold with a app bar like that and then have a title to home, right? So if we save that, we can close the PubSwick YAML, we can close this one. So what's actually happening now is that we can, um, let's actually call the navigation right now. So we can call the navigator dot push. We can take the, uh, we we'll take the context and for the route, we create a material page route, which takes a builder. And then here we can call our home page. And we have to import our home page like that. So let's see if this is working. So as I showed before, I had created a user with testing at Gmail. And then I had a password for that. So let's go back here. Testing. And then for the password. We can see if that actually works. And we actually had, <laughs> we didn't actually set the, the on press to the, for the button. So the, for the button for the on press, we can just call 
the sign in like that and we can rerun this page so let's see now it should be working there we go for the email okay it's now working fine I just had to restart the project so the the hot restart didn't actually work I had to press the stop button and then play again so here we can see we have our sign in page and if I go back to our authentication uh, we try to sign in now with testing at gmail.com and if I press sign in we're actually getting to the home page so just to uh, try that we're getting the right uh, user we can provide our user in here and go to the home page and create a final Firebase user. We import the Firebase user and we import uh, or create a constructor like that. So then we can take this user. Uh, because it's stateful we did, we take the widget.user and we can take the let's display the email we can actually do this as required and I have a small bug so I just need to close this and uh, play I'll fix this in the next tutorial uh, so if we run this now and wait for that to begin uh, we should see that we are able to sign in with the email and password we provided in the page right here and when we do that uh, we are going to navigate to our home screen and when we do that we are going to provide the user that we signed in with and then display the home widget with our user email so if we try that we write in testing at gmail.com we provide our password And we can see that we have home and then our email. So for the next tutorial, uh, I will see if I can get some things working. Um, depending on that, the, the next video will be about our sign up page. Uh, and if not, we'll probably have some kind of challenge. We'll see what will happen. So if you like this kind of video, uh, leave a like, comment and subscribe. And also check in the description for my Patreon. If you would like to support me there uh, and if not i will see you in the next tutorial bye